Okay, so in the last little tutorial, I showed you how to create a CRUD app fast. This time we're gonna do the same basic thing, but using a data grid. So let's create a new app. Um, and instead of creating a new uh, database, this time we'll add the data table service and um, we will select the database that we created last time, called people. So now we're just importing that table and sharing it between the two apps that we had in the previous example already included. We're going to do the same sort of thing that we did last time, except this time we're going to input a data grid on the user interface. Um, we're going to go into the code, do the same sort of thing we did last time. Now items a search that's returned from the people database. Order um, and we go into the form design and one of the things that's different about the data grid is that you can just automatically have it create columns from the, the rows of the database. So if you run this already, we've got um, already got Nice little display. Up, oh, you know, we don't have a nice little display because we did not set the data table to be readable, editable, searchable by the front end. By default, all the database tables and Andal apps are not readable by the front end because generally we don't want people to be able to adjust front end code and look at our database. But in this case, the whole point to make a front end that can edit and delete the database. So to run this, all we've done is add the um, data grid, let it auto find the columns, and we've got an instant column display. So we want to be able to adjust this a little bit. Um, so what we can do is go in, we've got another repeating channel here. Uh, this row template, we can take each one of these uh, columns and insert a particular widget for each column. So again, we put in the last, last time a text box and a text area. It's in the text box. We we'll set that to be a number. There. Let's do the same thing we did last time and make the notes a And uh, we can adjust the size of this, but uh, down here, what we'll do is go into columns for this grid, set the size there. You can see it's already created a default title, a default key for the database. And let's set these the width we want them. And, uh, you're going to see that we have a little bit of, a, of an issue when we uh, make these things too big to fit onto the screen. Note should be a little bit bigger. So let's So now I run this, a little issue. Um, it's going to be, we don't quite have an issue because we haven't made it too big. But if we have a bigger layout, you know, let's make these bigger. Make these. 
All right. I got an issue when we run it. It's going to be bigger than the screen is wide. And so now you can see we've got this thing sort of wrapping around. Name and address columns are on top of each other. And although that works, we can fix this. So what I'm going to do is go here and example kind of grab a little bit of um, a little bit of CSS to make this thing scroll to the left. So what we're going to do is grab a little bit of um, this code. Uh, and we stick that in the assets. Stick it in the, the uh, theme.css top. And you notice we've got a couple, uh, a couple of properties set um, for this anvil role, which we're going to call Y. And it's going to make the, um, the overflow, the uh, wrapping work properly so that this will scroll left. And the way we can implement that is by creating a new role. Reference And now I go into uh, form them. We can set the role here, but what that's going to do, if we set the role down here, we have this new role called Y. If we set it here, it's going to make that scroll off the page right in our designer. So we don't want to do it there. What we're going to do is set that in code uh, when the page loads. One role is going to be equal to y. So only when the application <coughs> runs will it do this. Now we've got a nice little scroll bar, and we could put as many columns in as we want. And it's the same thing we did. If we're going to uh, put our own little text box and other items in here, we need to find them. That um, template search for text box. We're going to bind each of these things to the appropriate on the database. Same thing we did in the last example. Notes and then this text area. Right. Same sort of database layout that we have, but with a nice column and row configuration. One, we can add another column here to hold that delete button. So I'm just going to add a column. Title. So this. We'll do the same thing we did last time with default icon, trash icon in. Smaller, so go back to that column and smaller. And uh, go back in here and write the same code as the last time. First, we'll confirm. Delete. Yeah.
and also right, to get it out of this way. Code, let's run that, see if we're doing properly. Yes, it should. Good, that's working. Now we need to create a button to add a row. So let's go back to our main form. The same thing we did last time. Stick a button up here, top. Let's make that go across the screen. New. Space and use a clicks on that button click event. Uh, and then again to refresh the display, we'll just open this page again. Refresh everything, re optimize everything. Kids, uh, okay. and we've got a uh, fully working card system now with a scrollable. Data grid. And there are a lot more things we can do to uh, fill out data grid capability, but this gives us basic card fun functionality. Um, Um, and also, so you see, we can set the pagination on this. Uh, here for the data grid. Down the bottom here, you can set the extra page. Let's set that just to hold four rows. And now we can run this. Um, now we have four rows. That's a new row. Page out of there. Um, here. Now you can see we've already got a new row added as soon as we added another row to the database. So we start some data. And of course, it will optimize it. Initially. Some of the junk. That one you can see we had uh, some rows in the database. We get enough number of pages. You can set that page item to page number you wanted. We can set that to be hundred or more per page. So if you and Jump between pages. So that can handle just about any size data layout you need. A repeating panel would just take up the entire page and likely be very sluggish. This just lazily loads as you load pages from the database. So um, a little bit nicer for handling bigger uh, 
collections of data in more of a tabular row column layout than just using a repeating panel. Um, and again, this is a repeating panel, so we can set this layout however we want. If we want to make that layout, um, you know, go on to other lines, we can. Okay, let's publish this. Play with it. To uh, now, it can run. watching this video can go and play with this little database system. Okay. So, cool. 